Hello, today I thought I'd show off some of Luigi's Mansion 3's multiplayer mode called Scarescraper and discuss how some of it works. I've been enjoying the game mode, but it seems it's still early enough that people haven't quite figured it all out yet, so here's some tips. And honestly, I haven't figured it all out yet either, so if you know some things I don't mention here, go ahead and leave them in the comments. The basics are, you're joining up with friends or random online players and each floor has a different objective. The first floor tends to be capture a certain number of ghosts, which you can see in the bottom right hand side of the screen. You'll want to keep an eye on your radar in the upper right hand corner because it gives you a good indication of which rooms have yet to be explored. You can expand the minimap by hitting up on the D-pad. You'll also want to watch out for traps, and if you get captured by a rogue piece of carpet or a wildly swinging door, you'll want to hit down on the D-pad to ask your teammates for help. If you happen to see a teammate calling for help in the lower left hand corner, just make a beeline for the flashing indicator on the radar and help them out. The longer they remain stuck, the longer they're not helping you complete your objective. And that can be the difference between success and failure. So don't ignore your teammates. Help! 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 If you do get stuck and your teammates ignore you, the game will eventually give you some sympathy and set you free. If you're being particularly observant, you may even be able to avoid these traps. Getting rid of a rug trap, for instance, can save you and your teammates from trouble later. The other nonverbal communication options are right on the d-pad to say, over here, and left on the d-pad to say, thank you. Most commonly, if you hear someone calling over here, it's either because they found a room full of ghosts and they're struggling to catch everything, or they found a room with a pressure plate. These rooms are marked on the minimap the moment someone finds them. If you hear someone calling you over to one, you should quickly join them and pop out your Gooigi. If everyone and their Gooigi stand on the platform, the door will unlock and you'll find more ghosts waiting for you on the other side. If you're running out of time and can't find any more ghosts, chances are they're on the other side of this door. So don't ignore your teammates calling for you to join them in this room. Another thing you should keep an eye out for is power-ups. The ones I've found are a pair of glasses that allow you to see ghosts and hidden objects, a power-up for the vacuum that makes it so you don't have to hold the thumbstick in the opposite direction of a fleeing ghost before you can start slamming them against the floor, a power-up for your flashlight that makes it so a charged flash lights up a whole room, and a star power-up that, much like classic Mario games, makes it so you don't take any damage and any enemy you run into dies instantly. And finally, there's also an ambulance hat that lights up when you're near an object of interest, which, as far as I can tell, can also be a trap, so be careful trusting the hat too much. As you can imagine, these power-ups are godsends for capturing ghosts quickly and efficiently. And you need to be efficient because you don't have a lot of time to complete the given objective. On the one hand, you can't spend a lot of time just sucking up anything and everything as tempting as that may be. So unless the floor's objective is to collect a certain number of coins, don't spend too much time collecting stuff. Though do be aware that smaller rooms full of objects or chests can net you bonus time, so don't ignore them. Scarescraper is fun and surprisingly difficult to complete. And you can die, but don't worry, you can also be revived. So hang in there and wait for help. <laughs> So far, the objectives I've played have been capture the ghosts, which, just like it sounds, tasks you with capturing ghosts. Then there's defeat the crows, which you can do by flashing your flashlight at them. Then there's collect the money, which is pretty self-explanatory. And finally, there's Rescue the Toads, in which you'll have to find toads being terrorized by ghosts, capture the ghosts so the toads in the room stops freaking out, and then walk it back to a special room with a portal so he can escape. This room should be marked on your minimap if you forget where it is. But those are the only ones I've encountered so far. If you've made it further than me and played objectives I haven't, let me know what they are. You can choose to play just 5 floors or be bold and go for 10 floors, but I'll be honest, I have yet to complete the 5 floor version, so I'm not sure I'm ready for the 10 floor version just yet. Nintendo has announced that more multiplayer options are coming in the form of paid DLC in the future, so keep an eye out for that if you enjoy the current multiplayer offerings. Anyway, have you been playing Luigi's Mansion 3? Let me know about it in the comments, and tell me what modes you'd like to see them add in the future. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, check out my full Luigi's Mansion 3 impressions video, and I'll catch you on the next one.
Yeah. <laughs> 